Guys, today I'm sitting here with my 10 year old daughter. Her name's also Raquel. Hi. Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet this large donut pillow. It's a really fun project and you can choose any kind of candy decoration you want for the front. The donut she chose has the sprinkle dots and she chose a chocolate flavor for the back. I wanted mine to have a vanilla one and this is the one I'm going to be showing you how to crochet. One thing I do want to mention is that if you're going to want your pillow to have two tones like this one, make sure that the texture for the two colors is similar, if not exact. Because this way when you're binding your pillow all around together or crocheting the two colors together, one side won't be larger than the other one. That's very important that the texture is the same for both the colors. Unless you want your donut to be all one color, then you won't have that problem. But I think that's all I had to mention. Am I forgetting anything? I don't think so. So let's get started. These are the two colors I'm going to be using for my donut, but keep in mind that you can also make your donut all one color. The pink colored one is by Red Heart Super Saver, and the color is Pretty in Pink. The other color I'm going to be using is also by Red Heart Super Saver, and the color for this one is Buff. This is the crochet hook size hook I'm going to be using. Another thing to have at hand for this project is a pair of scissors along with a safety pin. To begin this project, I'm going to be leaving a little tail behind and over this area I'm going to begin and I'm going to cause a little bit of tension to my yarn. I'm going to twist my crochet hook around my yarn and then I'm going to twist it all around. Now with this hand I'm going to hold on to the short little tail and with this other hand I'm going to be pulling my main source of yarn. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through that first stitch. Again, I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and just continue my chain until I reach 35 stitches. I just completed my chain of 35. What I'm going to do is join my two ends together. Before I do, I want to make sure that my chain is nice and straight so that there's no twisting later on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my crochet hook and place it into the first stitch of the opposite side. So there's my two ends. What I'm going to do now to join them is I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and just place it in between my two ends and that joined my ends together. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and I'm going to go into the first stitch grab that yarn pull it through. There's my three little loops. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through my three little loops. Again, I'm going to do the same thing, wrapping the yarn around my crochet hook. I'm going to go into the following stitch and this is a pattern I'm going to be following. There's my three little loops. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through the three little loops. Now the third time, I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and I'm going to go in twice into the same stitch. There's one time and again to the same stitch a second time. So that's the pattern I'm going to be following. The following two times, I'm going to go in once into each of the following two stitches. And the third time, again, I'm going to go in twice into this same third stitch. So I'm just going to continue this pattern till I go all the way around. One thing I wanted to let you guys know is that this is just one side of our donut. You guys are going to have to be following this pattern one more time for the opposite side. I'll let you guys know when to start that side. I've just gone all the way around. What I'm going to be doing for row 2 and row 3 is the same exact thing I did for row 1. I'm going to be wrapping the yarn around my crochet hook. I'm going to go into the following stitch, grab that yarn, pull it through. There's my three little loops. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through the three little loops. I'm going to do the same thing going in once to the following stitch. And the third time, I'm going to go in twice into that same stitch. So it's basically the same thing we did for round one. So I'm going to do the same thing for round two and round three. This is what my little donut's looking like after completing my third row. What I like to do right about now is I like placing my safety pin over the area where the little tail is, where I began my project. This way I will know every time I've 
and did a row and I'm beginning a new one every time I pass the little head of my safety pin. For row four, I'm going to be changing the pattern up just a little bit. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to be going into the first three stitches one time. So I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook. I'm going to go into the following stitch, grab that yarn, pull it through, wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through the three little stitches. And I'm going to do the same exact thing a second time and a third time. Now the fourth time, we're just going to be going into that fourth stitch two times. There's one time and two time. And I'm just going to continue following this pattern. The following three, I'm just going to be going in once into each of the following three stitches. And the fourth time again, I'm going to be going in twice. So I'm just going to continue this pattern all around row four. I've just completed row four. I'm about to begin row five. All I'm going to be doing for row five is wrapping the yarn around my crochet hook, going into the following stitch, grabbing that yarn, pulling it through. There's my three little loops. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through the three little loops. That's all I'm going to be doing all around row five. I've just completed row five. I'm about to begin row six. What I'm going to be doing for row six is following a pattern as well. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, go into the following stitch, grab that yarn, pull it through that stitch, wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in. I'm going to be doing the same exact thing to six of my stitches. So this is stitch number two, number three, and I'm just going to continue until I reach six stitches. Now for my seventh stitch, I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and go in twice into that seventh stitch. And again, I'm gonna go into the following six, one time only, and the seventh one I'll be going in twice. And I'm just gonna be following that pattern all around row six. I've just completed row six. I'm about to begin row seven. Row seven, we're just going to be going in once into each of the stitches. Very simply wrapping the yarn around my crochet hook, going in to the stitch, grabbing that yarn, pulling it through, wrapping the yarn around my crochet hook and going in through the three little loops. So I'm just going to continue this pattern all around row seven. I've just completed row seven. I'm about to begin row eight and I'm going to be following this pattern all around row eight. What I'm going to be doing to each of my following 10 stitches is very simply the same thing. Wrapping the yarn around my crochet hook, going into the stitch, grabbing that yarn, pulling it through the stitch. There's my three little loops. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through the three little loops. So I'm going to do the same exact thing to the following 10 stitches. Now to stitch 11, all I'm going to do is the same exact thing, except I'm going to be going in twice into that stitch. The following 10, I'm just going to be doing the same exact thing, going in once, and once I reach stitch 11, I'll go in twice. So I'm just going to continue with that pattern all around row 8. I've just completed row number eight. I'm about to begin row number nine. What I'm going to be doing for row number nine is wrapping the yarn around my crochet hook, going into the stitch, grabbing that yarn, pulling it through the stitch. There's my three little loops. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through the three little loops. So I'm going to be doing that to each of the stitches all around my row nine. I've just completed row 9. I'm about to begin row 10. Now for row 10 and 11, it's going to be the same pattern. I'm going to be doing the same exact thing to the following 10 stitches, wrapping the yarn around my crochet hook, going into the stitch, grabbing that yarn, pulling it through the stitch. There's my three little yarns, my three little loops. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through the three little stitches. I'm going to be doing the same thing to the following 9. Now for stitch 11, I'm going to be going in twice. So that's the pattern I'm going to be following for my line 10 and my line 11. I've just completed my row 11. Now what I'm going to be doing for row 12, 13, and 14, because I'm just going to do 14 lines, is very simply just wrapping the yarn around my crochet hook, going into the stitch, grabbing that yarn, pulling it through. There's my three little loops. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through the three little loops. So the following three rows, which are row 12, 13, and 14, I'm just going to be doing this same exact thing. And another thing I wanted to mention is when you're following the pattern, once you get to where the safety pin ends, you end the pattern there and then you begin the new pattern even if you didn't complete the pattern 
once you get to the safety pin. So I'm just going to continue um, what I just showed you for my following three rows. This is what your donut should look like after you've completed your 14 lines. Now it's time to add the sugar candy decoration on top of the donut. For this donut, I decided to add the long little sugar sprinkles on top in a variety of colors. So that's what I'm going to show you how to uh, do right now. And it's important to add the candy or the donut decoration at this point before you join the second part of your donut. So that's the next thing we're going to do. I'm going to show you how to add the candy decoration. I'm going to grab a piece of yarn and I'm going to cut a piece. This is going to be my long little sprinkle and what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it wherever you want to place it. They're going to be spread or all around the donut and you could place it sideways, you could place it straight, however you want. The sprinkles fall however they want. So I'm going to place it sideways. I'm going to get my crochet hook, place it into the stitch and grab that yarn and pull it through the, the blue yarn. I'm just going to pull it through the back and then I'm going to measure around how long would I like my sprinkle to be. So I'm thinking right about there, coming in sideways. So I'm going to place it there, my crochet hook, and bring the other half of that blue yarn in through there. So I'm going to adjust it comfortably, not too tight. I'm going to flip my donut to the back. I'm going to make a knot. Not a not, I want the actual knot to be tight, but I don't want to tighten it like that because then Look what happens to the pill. That one looks so pretty. So I want it to be relaxed from the front, but I do want the actual knot to be nice and tight. So I'm just going to tighten that up. Now it's up to you if you'd like to cut the two little tails or leave them towards the back. Those are going to be hidden anyhow. So now just add your colorful sprinkles, doing the same exact thing all around your donut. As many as you want or as little as you want. Here's my donut with the sprinkle. Now we're going to begin adding the background part of our donut. I folded my donut in half. This way it's easier for me to maneuver it around while I'm crocheting. Remember the little tail we left behind? That little tail is the one you're going to find in the center of the donut. That's the one we're going to be using to unite the second color we're going to be using. Unless you want to continue using pink, then you'd have to attach or make a little knot with your same pink color. But because I, this is the second color I'm going to be using, I'm going to zoom you guys in a little bit. I'm going to be making a really close knot to the little pink tail we left behind. I'm going to knot it together with my new color. I'm going to get my two ends and with my finger I'm going to wrap them around my finger and with this little loop I've made, I'm going to bring in the two little tails with the two different colors, bring them all the way through. Now I want this knot to be as close as possible to the rim center of the donut. So I'm going to start pressing down, 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 very slowly. And once I have it as close as possible, I'm going to press. And that way the knot's going to be really close to the center of the donut. Now with these two little ends, I'm just going to be making a knot. So here's my two little tails. It's optional if you'd like to keep them or cut them. This is actually going to be on the inside part of the donut, so I'm just going to leave it there. So now here I have my new color yarn. What I'm going to be following is the same exact pattern I followed when we began our donut, which would be, here's the center part of our donut. I'm going to be following the same pattern we followed for the first one. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to start it off. And from there, you're just going to have to follow along that same exact pattern we followed. So you'll probably have to go back and see, um, exactly what pattern we followed for each of our 14 lines because that's exactly what you're going to be doing now for the first line I'm going to wrap my yarn around my crochet hook go into the stitch grab that yarn pull it through and I'm just going to directly go into the following one this is just to begin it there's my three little loops I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through my three little loops I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook go into the following stitch remember we went in one time into each of those first two stitches. Now, the third time, we're, we're going to go into that one two times. So there's one and two. The following two stitches, I'm going to be going in once into each of them. So 
it would be one single time, two single time. And then the third time I'm going to go in twice into this stitch. And basically we're just going to continue this pattern all around our first row from our opposite side. So just continue following your pattern the same exact way we did for the pink side. I've completed my 14 lines. This is the center part that's completely united to the pink part. So this is going to be where we're going to be adding the stuffing to our pillow and here's the pink area. So I'm going to zoom you in to show you what to do next. So here's the area where I ended. I want to end in the same exact area where I ended over the pink area. Exactly right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this stitch big and I'm going to be cutting over that area. Now I'm going to place my fingers in through that big loop, grab the little tail and bring it in and press. I'm going to flip to the back side, find a space, grab that little tail and bring it in through there and all I'm going to do next is bring it in halfway and I'm going to make a knot with these two areas, with these two sides. It's optional if you'd like to cut off the little tails. I'm going to be leaving them there because they're going to be hidden in the center of the pillow. Next I'm going to be flipping my pillow over the pink area and all along I left the main source of pink yarn attached. It, it, all the pillows I've made, the donut pillows, it hasn't bothered me being there. It hasn't gotten tangled or anything. So now I'm just going to get ready to start crocheting my two colors together. I'm going to place my crochet hook into that last loop we worked on with the pink and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be crocheting a little area, a certain area and stuffing it little by little. So what I'm going to do here, here's my two ends that I ended with. These two and those are the first two I'm going to unite. So I'm going to just place my crochet hook in through there, grab my main source of your pink yarn and bring it in through there. So what I'm going to do now again is wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, go into the following stitch of the pink and the beige, grab that pink yarn, bring it in through those two colors. There's my three little loops. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in through the three little loops. Again, wrap the yarn around my crochet hook, go into the following stitch of the pink and the beige, bring that yarn in through both the colors and there's my three little loops. I'm going to wrap the yarn around my crochet hook and bring it in. So I'm going to be doing this about 20 times, 20 stitches going around. I'm going to be filling my pillow with this right here so you can basically use any filling of your choice. This is what the polyfill looks like. It's just really fluffy and comfortable. It's 100% polyester. This is what the front of the pillow is looking like and that's what the back is going to look like. And let me zoom that in a little bit so you can see it. That's the back and that's the front and I already did the 20, the 20 stitches over the corner. So what I'm going to do is every 20 stitches I do, I'm going to refill them. So I'm just going to basically grab my refill or my fill, my pillow filling, and I'm just going to place it in there. Little by little, every 20 stitches. That way at the end, it becomes easier so you don't have to do it at the end. So there you can see how it's going to become uh, you're going to be able to fill it up little by little. So every 20 stitches I'm going to be filling it in with the stuffing. I'm going to continue doing this until I fill my pillow all around completely. I'm about to close up my pillow so I'm going to just continue doing the same thing until I get to the opposite side. I'm working on my last stitches. So I have one more left to go. I'm going to place it in through there. And what I'm going to do here is the same exact thing. I'm going to pull that last stitch and make it big and I'm going to be cutting around this area. Now I'm going to be placing my fingers in through this big loop. I'm going to grab the short little tail I just cut and bring it in through that loop and I'm going to press as hard as I can. Now I'm going to flip 
my pillow backwards. I'm gonna grab my crochet hook, bring that little loop in. One more time, I'm gonna grab that little tail, bring it into the little loop, and press all the way. Now I'm going to be placing my crochet hook into that stitch. I'm gonna grab that yarn, pull it through halfway, and I'm just going to be making a knot with these two areas. Remember, you can finish off your projects however you feel is best. Now we're just gonna cut off the two little tails. So this here's the area where I ended the pillow right there. You could see the little knot. If that's something that bothers you, you can just place that area downward, but it's not very noticeable. This is what the back of the pillow looks like all around. I followed the same exact pattern for both these pillows. The only difference is that on the larger one, I stuffed it more than I did the smaller one. These pillows look absolutely adorable in a little girl's room. 